real quick. So just giving them subtle little praises for the things that they're doing helps them while they're on track. That's the love part. That's the friendship part. But if they start veering off, you have to push them back where they belong. Okay? You have to be the accountability for them that they haven't been for themselves. You have to be the discipline for them that they haven't been for themselves. So when people hire trainers, they hire trainers not only for the knowledge to get the results that they want, but also for the accountability, the discipline, for all the other aspects that they might be missing other than just the knowledge. So you have to do all of that, okay? So you have to balance being tough love. You have to balance being a friend and balance being an asshole, <laughs> okay? So you have to find your balance between those. And then the last thing, the third thing, is just actually give a crap about the client. So listen to them when they talk. Don't just cut them off. Don't just talk about yourself. Don't make sure, like, don't be the type that, like, anytime they have a story, you always have to relate and say how you, like, still be like, oh, yeah, I wasn't feeling good last weekend. Oh, yeah, two weekends ago, I really wasn't feeling good either. Like, don't compare all the time, okay? Just listen. Just listen to them talk. Ask about their lives. Ask about their, you know, loved ones. So friends, family, children, all that stuff. So make it more of a whole health experience. Not just physical health, but have some relational health, emotional health, mental health. Have some connection other than just, uh, you know, do this exercise for these sets and these reps. So you want to help them improve their life, not just their physical health. Okay, whenever you're able to. So if you've read a good book about, you know, self-discipline, I'll recommend the book to your clients. You know, if you've read a good book about sleep health, recommend that book to your clients. Like, reach out to them about things other than just your training sessions. That'll help a lot. Okay, so those are our three things for keeping current clients. Progress. Make sure they freaking make progress and make sure they know they're making progress. Balance tough love. Don't be a friend all the time. Don't be a jerk all the time. Be somewhere in the middle. Okay, <laughs> so be a friend when they're doing stuff right. Be a jerk when they're not. Push them back on track. Okay, and then actually give a crap. Talk to them about their life. Listen to them talk. Don't just talk about yourself all the time. So that is going to help you retain clients. So, for example, I went to a gym uh, at, at some point in time. We'll not say, like, the time frame or anything because it's not positive for them. But I saw there was one trainer. He had a lady doing a kneeling hamstring curl, okay, one-legged hamstring curl. She was doing reps, and God knows how many reps she ended up doing. But he was yelling over top of her to some friend he had across the gym. And they were joking about whatever the hell they would did, did like the night before or some kind of story. I wasn't even listening because I was just so pissed off at the trainer. I don't know how I think that lady probably did like 30 reps and that guy was not paying attention at all. And he was yelling over top of her to go talk to like to talk to his friend. There was another trainer at the same damn gym who was on his cell phone while a client was doing exercise. So I can understand if you want to record things in your cell phone between sessions. Oh, the client did this much weight, this many sets and reps. First of all, I think that's a horrible idea. Use pen and paper. When you're on your phone, it, it looks like you're not paying attention to the person. I don't give a shit what you say. It absolutely looks like you're not paying attention to the person. So you should never use a cell phone. You should never have a cell phone in your hand as a trainer. Okay? If you want it for a timer, buy a damn timer. Buy a little stopwatch. Okay? They're like a buck on Amazon. Holy shit. So, but that's what I was seeing was this trainer wasn't even paying attention to his client doing the exercise. He was just typing away something on his phone. I have no clue what he was typing. He could have been typing good stuff for her, but he wasn't paying attention to her while she was actually under the weight and moving the weight around. So, and then there's other things going on, but that was horrible, horrible, horrible stuff. So, if you're a personal training director, that is your issue. If you have a trainer walking around with a cell phone, Horrible, okay? Get them off their cell phones. Maybe you have an app for your gym. Maybe you have an app for the trainers that helps them pick exercises. They should be doing that shit before the, the client shows up. They should already have the workout created, okay, with alternatives or options. They shouldn't be on their phone in the middle of the session trying to figure out what exercise to do next. That's ridiculous. And they should be tracking stuff on pen and paper. And they should not be yelling across the gym to friends. If they're with the client, the client is their number one focus. So there's some tips for you. And um, uh, if you can get your trainers to do that stuff and understand the value of it. So how are they going to give a crap is tell your trainers it's going to make them more money. If they treat their clients better, they're going to get better retention of their clients. They're going to have more consistent income, more consistent um, like 
earnings over time. They'll also get bigger word of mouth and they'll grow their clientele naturally, not even having to rely on the gym to do so. Okay? So make sure they can figure, they can find value in it in the same way you're finding value as a personal training director. Okay? So uh, then our ways to kind of get new clients, like we said, is advertising. You can do it through social media, community events, just being talkative, wear a shirt of your gym around town. You, um, how can people know um, what you know? Okay, so advertising is how people can find you. How do people know what you know is how you advertise. So don't be forceful. Don't be a know-it-all. Uh, be polite. Be helpful. Offer information. So talk about um, what you know, not what you do. Make them the hero, not yourself. And then how can people decide they should select you over other trainers? Is advertise like you're advertising to yourself. Okay, what would get you to select a trainer? Advertise in that way. Okay, so... Um, think about what you need more of. Do you need more new clients or do you, need new, do you need more retention? Okay. Make sure you have time devoted to both. So for myself is doing this podcast um, and doing social media posts or the ways that I kind of present myself to new people. So I have time devoted to that every single day. It takes about an hour, hour and a half every day. So I don't mean to make any direct money on that. No. Okay, podcast actually has cost to it, but um, thankful to the patrons who are supporting our podcast, I sincerely, genuinely, more than I can express, truly appreciate that because it does help cover the cost of the podcast. And to be honest, it just kind of makes me feel good in the sense that somebody thinks this information is valuable enough that they would want to give a small donation per month. So it's very motivating. So I appreciate that very, very much. And it helped us buy this new microphone. So really, truly thank you to the patrons. So, um, But that's why uh, I do the podcast, is to give back to other people. And does it have some pot potential business support? Hell yeah, of course it does. So, But I did stuff for free, way the hell before I ever got anything for it. And um, I like doing this. So it helps me refine my knowledge by having to present it and teach it to other people. So the podcast is what I do to kind of present myself to new people as a form of advertising. And then also we do social media posts. Like I said, I do a post every day through Instagram, which shows up also on Facebook and Twitter. So that's my scheduled time and energy towards the day that I do for bringing in new people. How do I keep my current people? Well, again, the podcast and the social media stuff is presented to new, to my current clients as well. So that's how I keep the people I have now. Okay, is again through the podcast and social media. But also I have an hour a day that I answer emails for free. So from any of my clients that I have in person or uh, who don't pay directly for me to take the time to email them. So they might pay me for the one hour sessions we have together, but then they send me emails or text messages outside of that time, which um, I have to kind of allot time for. Because if you're helping, you know, 30 some plus people a day and half the people send you an email or text that day, that's a lot of time. So I've had to actually schedule an hour of nothing else but just answering free stuff, text messages and emails. So that's something I do that I commit to keeping my current clientele. I also set aside time every time they come in for their session. I talk to them, ask them about their how the day is. So we do it at the very beginning of the session. So it kind of clears their mind. We can just I can kind of get a feel for what they are going to be like that day. And then I can adjust the session accordingly. And then I follow up on anything we discussed. So if there was something that was really important to them or anything they were struggling with, I try to send a text, an article, mentioning it maybe in the next session. Say, hey, yeah, you mentioned like your daughter wasn't feeling good. Is she feeling better now? So that stuff makes sure that they know you care. Okay, so you have to set aside and schedule time and energy towards each of those things, bringing in new people and keeping a hold of current people you have. Okay, so think about what you need more of. Do you need more new people or do you need more retention? Make sure you have time devoted to both and whichever you're lacking in or not doing as well in, reevaluate what you're currently doing. So before you just try to schedule more time and energy, make sure whatever freaking time and energy you're using now is actually being used correctly and in the best manner. So reevaluate what you're doing correctly, I mean what you're doing currently. Then only add more time or effort or energy after you do the evaluation. So work smarter first, not harder. Okay? So hopefully this was helpful. This was way longer than I expected, but hopefully there was a lot of good information here for trainers and personal training directors and 
anybody else who happened to maybe stumble in on this one and actually listen the whole way through. So, um, but thank you for listening. And if there's anything we can do to help, so if you have a quick little email you want to shoot, any kind of problems you're running into, just shoot us an email, brutalironjim at gmail.com, and I'll send you some type of uh, help or aid or something. Okay, if you want to schedule a consultation, uh, or if you send me a, a problem that can't be answered quickly, I'll just tell you a consultation is going to be necessary. But um, we do consultations, like I said. So it's typically an hour where we'll talk on the phone or FaceTime or stuff like that. Uh, and then I spend an hour doing information development. So anything we talked about, I will create information and send it to you, whether that's a podcast, whether that's an article, whether it's finding you a book to read. So I just kind of devote two hours of my life all to you and what issues you're having. Okay. Whew. Hopefully this was helpful. Okay. Um, so thank you for listening, and there were, hopefully there was good value in here. So if you like the podcast, please share it with family and friends. The more people we help, the happier the world will be. Also, if you like this information, you can find more from us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Brutal Iron Gym. And if you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. The podcast is for you, so we want to know what you want to learn about. And you can tell us at our email at BrutalIronGym at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful. And thank you for listening. And thank you for watching.